Hi guys, my name is Subtruder, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain and welcome back. Now today I want to talk about decision making because we were talking about choice earlier in the week um, and I want to talk about decision making now because there are lots of people that struggle with it. Indecisiveness is one of these things that has been growing more and more and more as an issue for a lot of the people that I deal with, a lot of the people that I've worked with uh, and so on and so forth for ages. Why? Well because now we're bombarded with so much information uh, it causes kind of analysis paralysis, you know, our, our capacity to analyze and break down and understand that information gets kind of uh, limited and you know we just don't have as much uh, time or as much inclination to sift through it all before we need to make a decision and so people clam up people get shut down by it you know being bombarded by anything causes people to try and like lock themselves away to a degree and so it's it's tough and so today I wanted to put out four things that can help you make decisions um, now the first one is take your time you know there's even in things that you have your your time limit for you can take your time you can take a moment yeah um, if you've got the opportunity to kind of give it a rest go change of scenery have a drink something to eat come back to it and then think it over some more then do it if you've got the opportunity to sleep on it then great wake up in the morning fresh and go back to thinking about what that decision is. Obviously, if you've got less time to uh, to focus on things and, and stuff like that, when we rush, we kind of jump to quick conclusions and, and we kind of, our brain fills with fuzz because there's just uh, that, that panic moment where our brain just decides that it can't cope with all of it, but we need a decision. So if it just blankets everything in white noise, then maybe we'll find something. And that that doesn't really help, you know. It doesn't help us think through things. Um, and so the the best thing to do is just to take a moment. Yeah, um, we are more likely to make risky and and dangerous choices when we're under pressure. And you know, it, it's or especially short deadlines and things these days, um, quick turnarounds and stuff. It, it doesn't help. You know, a panicked or stressed brain doesn't think as, fe as as effectively as one that's just being a bit stretched or one that's that's relaxed and so you know take that time try and and minimize the risk by just giving yourself a little bit of a break just a few minutes just to go away uh, clear your head uh, calm yourself down uh, having a drink I, I, I always find is a great idea with like 70 something percent water when you're, you're panicked, there's, that water's going to be coursing through your body. It's going to be pumping out your skin. Um, you're going to be losing it. So, you know, just reintroduce some. Just refill yourself a little bit. You know, a nice cool drink or a nice warm drink, depending on your environment, can potentially just bring you back down to some kind of equilibrium where you're able to to judge more effectively and more clearly. Just, just take that moment for yourself. Um, the next thing the, that I would suggest, and this is something that you guys, I'm, I'm sure, expect, from me at this point, uh, if you've been watching the videos, my video, my videos for a while, gather the facts, look for evidence, look for, look for things that are kind of based on something solid, on something that you can examine, on on um, information that you can verify, stuff like that. You know, it's it's stuff to to really dig through, um, and obviously the longer amount, the larger time you have the the more you can go through gathering information gathering facts you know if you've got a couple of hours to go through before you need to make a decision go you know a handful of google searches a quick look up here and there you know that can give you some extra information now there's no such thing as finding all of the information you're never going to have everything to inform you um because doing that again analysis paralysis you get locked into that kind of constant looking for more things to point you in the right direction and to to balance out what you're thinking and you're never going to get anywhere because you're just going to be too busy doing that so you know give yourself a cut off um, obviously it can be more difficult to do this in a, a stressed more tense kind of short term environment um, but one of the things that I used to do when I used to work with a, a team and we had to make a decision and gather all this information get them together and just run down a list of everything that you already know so and so's off sick 
um, this delivery is coming in now, this person has this to do, this person has this to do, we need that done by this time, this done by this time, and then we need to have this decision made. Yes, and then, you know, potentially having those other people there to go, yes, sure, that that's what we need to do, this is what we need to do. Potentially they can add in, oh no, but also so-and-so needs to do this, giving you an extra piece of information to take into account that maybe sways what you want to do. You know, it's it's even if you've got a very limited amount of time, you can still pull in a reasonable amount of information just to sway you on those decisions. Um, now, the next thing, and this this again also applies to um, dealing with people in groups. Uh, but number three is, you know, keep you an open mind. You know, people can potentially come and present uh, options to you, present new information to you that allow you to to kind of work around stuff. And never just assume that you're a hundred percent right, because you know automatically accepting um, that things are true means that you probably haven't thought through them all that well. You've not gained that information. You've not taken that moment. You've made a snap judgment, and snap judgments, there is a reason for them. There is a reason why we make them. But when it comes to making informed and higher quality decisions that serve us better, um, instantly jumping to what is true is not useful. It's a snap decision, it's one that's usually built in emotion um, rather than built on the information that you have available to you and it can do all kinds of, of things to screw you up later down the line. So, you know, try hardest not to jump to conclusions, not to jump in on bias and just go with, with the information that you have in front of you. Yeah, isolate that situation, break it down, pull in that information and go, right, that's all we've got to go on. Yeah, because doing that limits where you can flail. And when potentially you can flail anywhere as a result of making a decision, having that, those limits on you is worthwhile. And that brings us to the last point, and that is create rules, set limits. Why? Because we're... We may be good decision makers. We may be trying our hardest to take in all the information, give ourselves time to do it, uh, keep an open mind and all that kind of thing, but we're still human. We're still fallible. We still get tired. We still kind of get emotional. We get attached to things. We break. Um, you know, we, we don't always have everything at our disposal. As I said, there's no such thing as a perfect amount of full information around something. Uh, so sometimes, we miss a piece of useful information that we really should have had or really could have used in making our decision overall. And, you know, we're, we're not going to always be able to find that. And so when it comes to it, set yourself some rules. Yeah, set yourself the, the limits on things. Set yourselves um, the, the amount of time you're allowed to spend on making a decision. Set yourself the uh, limits on the number of people that you can use to kind of action that decision. Um, you know, make sure that you've got those limits on where your thinking can go. Because again, that we're, we're human, we thrive off um, systems. Yeah, we thrive off hierarchies, we thrive off rules that we set ourselves. We're the people that created religions, for God's sake. You know, literally entire cultural subsets that, that have spread across the world built around lists of rules we're the people who govern ourselves uh, by, by countries and internationally and even in terms of small groups amongst certain friends by the rules that we agree and lay down and within those structures that we build for ourselves we thrive so why wouldn't we thrive why wouldn't we make better decisions if we limit where we can go with it in the first place if we set ourselves those limits beforehand so that we can grow into that space and form the right shape that we need to get the job done rather than just trying to grow into that shape having no limits and splattering everywhere as it were you know it's a tough thing to do and as i've said in numerous videos in the past these things take practice you know um there, there have been people that I've coached, people that I've worked with who have been terrible decision makers. 
because they get emotionally invested. They make very quick snap decisions and they are not very good at them. They don't pull in enough information. And they just go for whatever seems right to them, whatever feels right to them. And they take it on board and they internalize it. And they hold on to it and they refuse to let go until it's all gone horribly wrong. And as a result of doing that, it's you know it, it doesn't serve them, it doesn't serve their employer or anyone else for a long time. And I am so proud of some of the people who I've worked with who have been able to then go, actually, no, I need to set myself limits. I need to take my time. I need to distance myself emotionally. I need to kind of work around it, keep an open mind, not just jump into something just because it feels right. We can't trust our minds. We can't trust our emotions. You know, there are so many viral memes of one sort or another that demonstrate that. The most recent, I think, being the whole Yanni Laurel thing that demonstrates just how fallible our own senses and feelings and whatever else can be. And so as a result, it's a case of going, right, you need to, to break it down, you need to analyse it, you need to take that step back. And this was something that even I uh, struggled with for a while in my first kind of few months as a, a leader, you know, taking that step back, analysing the situation and going for it, because I was usually quite good at just analyzing as I went and once I had a good idea of where I was going yeah that usually served me pretty well but obviously the quality of those decisions the the applicableness of those decisions to what I was doing and how long term the effects of them would be after the fact improved when I was able to take that step back and apply my already fairly reasonable kind of decision making problem solving skills but with that extra perspective but anyway, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Are there any other things that, that you would add to this list um, that you have found useful in your decision making? Um, or are there any decisions that you've done something like this for and it turned out better, it turned out worse? You know, I'd love to hear your experiences. But otherwise, guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, then please drop us a like, share this video, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the video later. Take care.